fine i think we are good to go so it would be nice if you can just quickly mention regarding the audio and the video part and then we can get started <laughs> i'll try to keep it short and precise doctor <laughs> it's been a long time so uh, yes medicine classes in delhi will be conducted uh, at sarman institute that is dr sarabjit singh's place uh, okay thanks love from uh, delhi adil thank you so much han ji ye rahega rahega it will it will be present uh, uh, on the chat so questions pe focus karte hain yaar let's focus on the question on hand you have the 65 year old guy who presents with palpitations shortness of breath for past two days and on examination you are having crepts in both the lung fields with a palpable liver तो क्रपिटेशन है लिवर भी पैल्पेबल है तो वन थिंग इज वेरी क्लियर दैट दिस पर्सन कुड बी इन कंजेस्टिव हार्ट फेलियर एंड बिकॉज द हिस्ट्री इज गिवन फॉर ओनली टू डेज आई वुड से दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप इज इन एक्यूट कंजेस्टिव हार्ट फेलियर एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम द ई सी जी ऑफ दिस चैप वॉज डन एंड देन यू वुड बी इवेलुएटिंग वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड द वेरिएबल आर आर इंटरवल आई थिंक एवरीबडी कुड टेक इट अप आई मीन एब्सोलूटली नो इशूज विद द वेरिएशन uh the heart rate of the patient is widely widely swinging you can see i mean the heart rate of this chap is jumping from 150 and then uh, going down to 60 so it's like you are pressing on the accelerator yes very good evening dr vanisha and then uh, once you press on the gas accelerator then you suddenly hitting on the brakes and you are decelerating so that variable rr interval is anyway a good uh, reason to understand that this guy is having a uh, uh, abnormal cardiac rhythm that is going to be dysrhythmia and hota kya hai ki whenever you have a variable rr interval you are always supposed to check for the presence of the p waves uh, in fmg exam they asked about that sinus arrhythmia thing which i had discussed earlier uh, where uh, ecg aata hai doctor sahab agar aap fmg exam ke liye pg mein to aata hi hai p wave present hoti hai to wo that is going to be sinus tachycardia lekin yahan par p wave absent hai so when you are having a variable rr with a absent p wave you get twitching dikhai de raha hai aap dekho yahan pe koi uniform p wave to present nahi hai so this particular chap is having atrial fibrillation and uh, then you obviously need to come to the right answer for this patient so we are having a c d b almost a b c abhi sabhi kuch aa raha hai to dekho basically the point is that this chap is having two problems one of the problems is that he has gone in heart failure and second is going to be atrial fibrillation so for those of you who are talking about high lalit good evening for those of you who are talking about metoprolol we use metoprolol for rate control uh, in patients of atrial fibrillation but uh, uh, point is ki would you be giving beta blocker to somebody who is in heart failure then the answer is a big no uh, why answer to this question is not option number a is because beta blocker is going to be uh, need pg is on time sir now i think so so metoprolol is going to be contraindicated i mean i waited till the last moment to take this so that i'm sure okay the exam would be conducted uh, this chap is having atrial fibrillation why answer is not a is because beta blockers are contraindicated in heart failure even if you look at diltiazem diltiazem also has a negative inotropic activity i mean it's it's gonna decrease the cardiac output and because of the negative inotropic action of diltiazem it would again be contraindicated because of congestive heart failure if this particular patient why answer is not b dr disrespect is because of the fact that both a and b are not given in heart failure so therefore you don't need to go in for either a or b it would be either c or d and adenosine is useful for management of uh, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia so i think most of the guys have got the correct answer to this question which is that i'll go for rhythm control in this patient where i can be using amiodarone uh, you see uh, doctor even when we talk about esmolol if the bp of the patient is 90 i would be very very dicey or i would not be very comfortable using beta blockers in the patient so the basic point is that uh, uh, yes uh, dr haresh parmar he has summarized it very well reason why option yeah yeah varsha that's what i'm saying na race protocol is useful for heart failure so first of all we always go for rate control then anticoagulation then chemical cardioversion electrical cardioversion but in this particular case you will not go for rate control so when you listen to the discussion i have also said that we don't go in for 
फैजान आप ईसीजी पढ़ लीजिए है ना एक दो घंटे का वीडियो है एक घंटे में आ जाती है ईसीजी कोई बड़ी बात नहीं होती टेक्नीशियन जब जब वो टेक्नीशियंस कर लेते हैं तो आप तो कर ही पाओगे ना आप डॉक्टर लोग हो यू आर इंटेलिजेंट पीपल्स हो इफ आई मीन दैट ई एम टी टेक्नीशियन कैन रीड ई सी यू कैन ऑल्सो रेस प्रोटोकॉल में बेसिक पॉइंट है कि वी आर नॉट गना बी यूजिंग सर समबडी सेड वेल डेल्टियाजम इज यूज सो डेल्टियाजम एंड मेट्रोपोलॉल बोथ आर यूजफुल फॉर रेट कंट्रोल But they are both useful for rate control only when the patient is not in heart failure. The main crux of this MCQ is कि अगर इस question में ये heart failure की findings नहीं दी होती and only this particular ECG was given and the question said what are you gonna do first line for this patient? Then okay, I mean we are gonna go in for metoprolol. But uh, the bottom line is sir PSVT अब पढ़ो अब app में जाओ थोड़ा पढ़ो PSVT क्या होता है paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. तो यहाँ पर हम बात कर रहे हैं हार्ड कोर डेटा की ठीक है ना थोड़ी डेटा क्रंचिंग करनी है आज यू नीड टू बी फोकस्ड फॉर टुडे एमरिनॉन नहीं देंगे शोएब एमरिनॉन जो है वो हार्ट फेलियर में यूज होता है बेसिकली आइनो मतलब वो आइनो डायलेटर है राइट सो एमरिनॉन नहीं यूज करते यहाँ पर आपको रेट कंट्रोल करना है यहाँ पे रेट कंट्रोल नहीं करना है एंटी कोगुलेशन इज एनी नॉट इन द ऑप्शन सो इस पर्टिकुलर केस में वील गो इन फॉर केमिकल कार्डियोवर्जन और केमिकल कार्डियोवर्जन में आपको दो दवाइयां बताई हुई हैं एक एमेड्रॉन इस्तेमाल होता है और सेकंड इबूटेलाइड यूज होता है अब इबूटेलाइड तो था नहीं ऑप्शन में वैसे बोथ ऑफ देम आर क्लास थ्री एंटेरिथमिक्स विच विल बी यूजफुल फॉर दिस पेशेंट पंकज डेली क्लास वुड बी आफ्टर द नीट पी एग्जाम एंड वुड बी कंडक्टेड सेपरेट फॉर नीट पी एंड फॉर एफ एम जी द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन नंबर सी एमेड्रॉन दोनों में यूज होता है बोथ इन वेंट्रिकुलर टैकी कार्डिया आई मीन इट्स यूजफुल फॉर बोथ एस एज वेल एज वी The basic concept behind this particular question is that heart failure अगर नहीं होता इस question में then your answers A and B would have been correct. So let's move on to the second one for today. Uh, this talks about uh, parameters that helps you differentiate between chronic bronchitis and emphysema. So basic concept यही है कि भाई COPD का patient है COPD के दो versions रहते हैं chronic bronchitis है emphysema है and uh, your job is basically to differentiate between हाँ जी हाँ जी everybody can watch. <laughs> मतलब आपको लग रहा है कि सीओपीडी नहीं पूछेगा क्या वो आपको राइट right? एफएमजी एग्जाम में नहीं पूछता क्या व्हेन इट कम्स टू सीओपीडी क्रॉनिक ब्रंकाइटिस एंड एम्फाइसिमा द क्वेश्चन सेज अब दोनों के बीच में सेपरेट कैसे करोगे डिफरेंशिएट कैसे करोगे सो लेट्स फोकस ऑन द ऑप्शंस इन दिस केस विच आर बेसिकली Electrical cardioversion, Dr. Chakravarti is not done in atrial fibrillation. Uh, I think I've explained that because there are clots present. So I would not be comfortable going in for electrical cardioversion in atrial fibrillation patient. Okay, okay. Let's focus on the second question for today, the one with respect to COPD. And the question says, do you differentiate how you do Option A says, FEV1, FEC ratio less than 0.7. So that tells you about obstructive airway disease. बट ऑप्शन ए में लिखा है रिवर्सिबल एयरफ्लो ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन तो वो रिवर्सिबल तो खैर आप एस्तमा में पढ़ते हैं तो दैट इज द रीजन बाय ऑप्शन नंबर ए वुड नॉट बी अ करेक्ट वन एज फार एज दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन इज कंसर्न ओके व्हेन वी मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन ऑप्शन नंबर बी इट सेज नॉन रिवर्सिबल एयरफ्लो ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन दैट्स अ स्टैंडर्ड फीचर ऑफ सीओपीडी सर इफ यू आर सेइंग ऑप्शन नंबर बी इज द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन देन प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड द फैक्ट दैट both varieties of copd whether it is going to be chronic bronchitis whether it's going to be uh, emphysema both of them both of them are going to be having a non reversible airflow obstruction only i mean one of the diagnostic criteria of this particular condition copd is non reversible airflow obstruction so b cannot be the answer because it will not help you differentiate it's just going to tell you ki bhai copd hai to so, sare option aapne dal diye a b c d a b c d karte hue option c pe chalte hain इंक्रीज हेमाटोक्रेट वैल्यू इंक्रीज हेमाटोक्रेट वैल्यू इज बेसिकली बिकॉज हाइपोक्सिया की वजह से एरेथ्रोपोइटिन विल बी प्रोडक्शन विल बी इंक्रीज एंड दिस गोज मोर इन फेवर ऑफ क्रॉनिक ब्रंकाइटिस विद अ फ्लैट एंड डायफ्राम नाउ द बॉटम लाइन इज दैट यू सी फ्लैट एंड डायफ्राम जस्ट टेल्स यू अबाउट ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव एयरवे डिजीज क्योंकि वट हैपन्स इन ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव एयरवे डिजीज इज एयर ट्रैपिंग तो जब एयर की ट्रैपिंग हो जाती है तो डायफ्राम जो होता है वो फ्लैटन हो जाता है तो पॉइंट है कि ऑप्शन नंबर सी जो है That will again be present in both chronic bronchitis as well as in uh, patients of emphysema. Primarily, why? Because दोनों में ही air trapping present होती है. But अगर आपने मेरा video ध्यान से सुना है या आपने किसी भी educator को follow किया है, तो they see ma there would be scarring present. So DLCO values would be relatively lesser. Yes, you are right. Uh, values would be relatively lesser. And in chronic bronchitis, definitely yes, you are right. 
uh, moving to the next one but as i said i mean the evidence based medicine component dlco would be the best test uh, uh, that would help you solve it fine thanks so much for the input actually i was writing so that's why the error of judgment would be there okay let's focus on the next question uh, guys for this one uh, this particular question talks about a post mi patient on day 2 and he ends up uh, yes yes uh, dr vikaria you perfectly right that's what i commented upon it would be lesser yep yep uh, coming to uh, the subsequent question we have a post mi patient on day 2 and he's having severe hypotension and the ecg of this patient is showing low voltage complexes in all the leads there is a motion defect with pericardial effusion suggestive of electromechanical dissociation uh, he says what should be the first step for management of this patient so i've had a lot of people commenting on c in this patient now for those of you who are saying that uh, answer is option number c uh, please remember that electromechanical dissociation means that the heart has burst electromechanical dissociation basically means that the heart has burst in the patient and because of the bursting per se what's going to happen is that uh, even if you do pericardial synthesis even if you remove whatever blood is present more blood will come the answer to this question is not urgent pericardial synthesis please appreciate the fact when i say the word electromechanical dissociation and this has been discussed in the topic of complications of myocardial infarction the bottom line is that in any patient uh, when there is a bursting of the heart you you are not going to do a pericardial synthesis in the patient pdf will be posted in the top educator group on uh, telegram uh, people saying option number d check pulse ar jisko hypotension hai jisko ecg mein uh, uh, low, left ventricular motion uh, ecg mein low voltage complexes aa rahe hain jab aapne itna sab kuch kar liya to check pulse thodi na karoge ye koi basic life support nahi hai na yaar we are not talking about basic life support at this particular point of time and we are not talking about a routine case of cardiac tamponade what we are talking about at the moment is a cardiac rupture People saying dobutamine option number A या dobutamine कब देते हैं जब patient को cardiogenic shock होता है इसका तो heart ही burst कर गया ना this guy is having a bursting of the heart itself तो अगर heart ही burst कर गया तो ऐसे circumstances में तो हम definitely I mean हम कहीं से भी इस particular case में uh, I'm still getting C in in the comments guys please appreciate the fact that pericardial synthesis तब करते हैं जब उसको cardiac tamponade हो यहाँ पे तो कार्डियक टाम्पोनार्ड मैंने नहीं बोला इलेक्ट्रोमैकेनिकल डिसोसिएशन का मतलब होता है भाई इसमें कार्डियक रपच्चर है हार्ट ही बस्ट कर गया तो अगर हार्ट ही बस्ट करेगा तो पेशेंट बचने के चांस ही नहीं है ना तो क्या करोगे उसको ओटी में लेके जाओगे ना ऐसा नहीं होता सर हम बचा लेते हैं जो ये कह रहे हैं कि भाई हार्ट बस्ट कर गया तो पेशेंट बचेगा कैसे तो हमारा काम ही बचाने का है ना अगर आप ये कह रहे हो कि भाई इलेक्ट्रोमैकेनिकल डिसोसिएशन में लेफ्ट फ्री वॉल रपच्चर होता ना इट्स एक्चुअली में जो टेक्निकल टर्म है इसके लिए वो तो समझाने के लिए था ना वट हैपन्स इज कि देर इज अ फ्री वॉल रपच्चर इन द पेशेंट तो फ्री वॉल रपच्चर के लिए लगाएंगे या डेकोरन पैच लगाएंगे ओटी में लेके जाएंगे सी वाले केस को हैंडल करेंगे तो अगर ऐसा हो जाता है अगर फ्री वॉल रपच्चर हो जाता है तो वट वी डू इज वी कैन प्रिपेयर दैट हम टेफलॉन से डेकोरन पैच से बायोलॉजिकल ग्लू से इसको मैनेज कर सकते हैं द मेन कॉन्सेप्ट बिहेंड दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन इज की कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ एम को पढ़ता है यूजली कार्डियोजेनिक शॉक फर्स्ट डे पे होता है कार्डियोजेनिक शॉक सेकंड डे पे परसिस्ट करे बड़ा अनलाइकली है सेकंड ईसीजी फाइंडिंग्स उसके अगेंस्ट जा रही है इको के फाइंडिंग्स अगेंस्ट जा रही है सो इफ यू आंसर्ड ए द पॉइंट इज द बूटामिन विल नॉट वर्क इन अ फ्री वॉल रपच्चर दैट्स पॉइंट नंबर 1 पेरिकार्डियो सेंटिसिस में आप ब्लड निकाल भी लोगे और आ जाएगा यार कितना निकालोगे सारा ब्लड थोड़ी ना निकाल दोगे उसका सो देन हां जी हां जी कोमल आई विल बी पोस्टिंग दैट वीडियो वाज विल बी पोस्टेड वंस अगेन तो द बॉटम लाइन इज अगर आप इसमें फ्री वॉल रपच्चर में पेरिकार्डियो सेंटिसिस करते भी हो तो ब्लड निकालोगे वो सारा का सारा जो ब्लड है वो आ, मतलब कितना निकालोगे सारा ब्लड तो नहीं निकाल सकते ना तो इसको सी में ट्रांसफर करना है तो करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन नंबर बीटा और जो मेन वर्ड है जो की आपको इस क्वेश्चन में पिकअप करना था दैट की वर्ड इन दिस क्वेश्चन टू बी पिक अप इज दिस वन दैट इज ई एम डी इलेक्ट्रोमैकेनिकल डिसोसिएशन मैंने हाईलाइट भी किया हुआ एक इलेक्ट्रोमैकेनिकल सिस्टोल होता है फिजियोलॉजी में क्यू एस टू और एक इलेक्ट्रोमैकेनिकल डिसोसिएशन होता है तो वर्ड्स थोड़ा पकड़ लेना बिकॉज की वर्ड्स आर इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर एवरी एम सी क्यू लाइक दिस यप द आंसर फॉर दिस हाँ जी बचने के चांसेस तो मुश्किल ही है बट हमारा काम ये है ना कि भाई उसको बचाने की कोशिश तो करेंगे ना ये तो बोलेंगे नहीं कि भाई तू गया काम से राइट ओके आंसर टू दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन नंबर बी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द इनपुट्स दैट आई प्रोवाइडेड टू यू सो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन अब मैंने सोचा सारे ही अगर मैं क्वेश्चन आपको ऐसे वाले पूछूंगा जो कार्डियोवेस्कुलर बेस होंगे तो आपको लगेगा सर बायस है 
तो मैंने कहा चलो तो आपका देख लेते हैं यू नो स्टडी सो मेनी अदर सब्जेक्ट्स सो लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट ओके सर आई बी अवॉइडिंग हिंदी एंड फोकसिंग ओनली ऑन इंग्लिश द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन टॉक्स अबाउट अ रेडियोलॉजिकल फाइंड दैट इज कॉल्ड फाइंडिंग विच इज कॉल्ड एज अ बॉल ऑन अ टी साइन एंड आई एम जस्ट वेटिंग फॉर योर आंसर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस यप यप ओके ओके नंदिनी विल ट्राई फॉर दैट Yep, ball on a T sign. I think you guys love a radiology. Let's have a look at uh, what you guys would be giving the answer for the subsequent question that I put for you guys. Dilasa देने की जरूरत ही नहीं है आप लोग self motivated लोग हैं ना survival खुद पे ही based होता है कोई पकड़ के उंगली पकड़ के थोड़ी ना survival कराता है It's a main world out there. ठीक है okay then when we come about a ball on a t sign we we usually are able to solve this question by exclusion because when it comes to supracardiac tavs pvc we usually read about a snowman heart or a figure of eight heart with wolman disease uh, which is related to acid lipase deficiency we would be having adrenal calcification and uh, i mean that's a very standard question that we always get wolman disease having adrenal calcification Uh, for aortic dissection, what's going to happen is that there would be a tear in the aorta. The appearance that would be coming would be called as a tennis ball appearance. So I am trying to solve this particular question even by exclusion. The correct answer for this would be renal papillary necrosis. Uh, for people saying C, uh, well, I I expected better answers here. Supracardiac TAPVC, you know, that is figure of eight or a snowman heart that you get. But when it comes to uh, the classical ball on a T sign, you no, know, that would be like. Uh, i would say uh, the renal calyx this would be a renal calyx and uh, there is a renal papillary necrosis that is occurring so golf on a t or ball on a t sign i mean these are two very classical terms that ball on a t or a lobster claw uh, with respect to papillary necrosis in a patient and uh, even if they give you a image based question you should still be able to solve it out uh, with respect to a contrast uh, an rct of the kidney you definitely can see that the calyx of the patient is giving that classical picture which is present here i'll just erase it for your convenience here but this question can be easily solved on the basis of exclusion that i mentioned especially these terms uh, ball on t and lobster claw is what they definitely can love to ask about papillary necrosis as far as the causes of papillary necrosis are concerned the mnemonic is postcard and i'll not get into that mnemonic because i think that's pretty straight forward but do remember chronic alcoholic renal vein thrombosis diabetes are some of the important causes for papillary necrosis in a patient and uh, well as far as uh, this slide is concerned yep from the radiology component this is definitely uh, worth remembering and uh, then they can give you a picture of a kid also and i've shown here is the adrenal gland calcification which i have already mentioned in my previous slide which would be seen with wolman disease where acid lipase would be present yes uh, yogender you perfectly right when it comes to a tennis ball appearance that would be classically seen with aortic dissection so because uh, there were couple of matching terminologies yes yes you right for the causes you know the postcard is the mnemonic for papillary necrosis causes which i think everybody is familiar with so the main objective here was to focus on Uh, the aspects that i have mentioned at this moment so all you need to do is get these facts right so that uh, yep yep i'll zoom into the pic okay okay uh, i think it's uh, pretty self obvious as far as the image is concerned i have zoomed into the pic for your convenience uh, the one that i've just mentioned uh, shiva says should we be giving uh, gt in the remaining days uh, giving gt uh, i am i would think that custom modules would be relatively better because you would be very aware of whatever weak topics that you are you know aware of at this moment i mean there are lot of sub topics in every subject that you are going to be suffering from uh unlikely but at my end uh, it is fine still i am just holding on for a second uh so some internet issues will always be there voice lag will always be there whole of india is on internet so some issues can be present but otherwise i think it should be settled settling down uh, ibqs approximately 20 ibqs would anyway be present so i think uh, 
but approximately 20 10 percent videos are definitely uh, issue okay so let me just fix it i think uh, the lagging should go away in a while okay fine i was just waiting uh, maybe maybe some local internet issues might have been present okay i hope it is settled okay hopefully it is settled so should go but might have been a transient uh, issue that might might be solved okay fine fine might be some transient internet issue that might have resulted in this so i hope it should it should settle okay hi harsh shuru karte hain agle sawal pe aate hain so i'll just zoom again into the slide so that you can focus on the question uh, we are having this uh, gentleman 65 lady in fact 65 year old lady uh, with rheumatoid arthritis who's having uh, recurrent pericardial effusions Yo, yep, 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 uh, Dr. Shiva, I would not suggest uh, uh, you to go in for uh, uh, any GTs because that cause performance anxiety. I mean, if I'm going to be you, I would be avoiding GTs and going for performance anxiety. I'll prefer to go in for custom modules and try to focus on my weak, weaker topics at that particular point of time. Okay, great, great. Chalo, let's, let's fine. Let's continue the discussion and uh, hopefully we will be able to... Uh, medicine revision few tips faizan that is what we are doing just focus on as many uh, topics as you can uh, let's focus at the job at hand we have this lady with rheumatoid uh, recurrent pericardial effusions is the keyword for this question there is no evidence of distended veins neck veins so unlikely to be having a presentation of uh, cardiac tamponade but low voltage uh, qrs complexes are present so this lady is uh, having evidence of pericardial effusion low voltage ecg is anyway a diagnostic feature uh okay great great arsh great so when it comes to option number d which is gonna be pleurodesis uh pleurodesis is something uh, which we go in for treatment with respect to person having recurrent pleural effusion uh please focus at the job at hand and there are lot of other distractions that might be present and they happen at the time of the exam also the answer to this question is not option number D. Why? Because pleurodesis is done for recurrent pleural effusion and this particular patient is suffering from a recurrent pericardial effusion. So question dhyan se padho yaar. Option number A. Pericardiocentesis kab karte hain? Pericardiocentesis karte hain cardiac tamponade ke case mein? Agar aap is lady ko recurrent pericardiocentesis karoge to she will literally cry, howl in front of you. The doctor you are gonna put a needle in my chest every few weeks when you look at option number a cardiac tamponade ke liye pericardiocentesis karte hai. even if you convince her for you know for a pericardial effusion that okay we're gonna poke in a needle and we're gonna take out the fluid the fluid will come back no i mean she herself will say sir i mean what kind of treatment is this that you're gonna poke a needle right from my tummy around my heart and suppose the needle goes into my heart then Pericardi point number one, why pericardiocentesis is not the answer is, it is done for cardiac tamponade. Sec reason number two, why pericardiocentesis is not the answer is because of the fact that you are not going to poke a needle into her chest every time. For people who are saying option number C, pericardial stripping. Sir, I have told you that pericardial stripping is for calcification around the heart. Is calcification? Hai kya? 
exclusion skills man exclusion skills in the exam they don't give straightforward questions the reason why we are conducting this session is to sensitize you to the fact that you have to rule out the things by 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 exclusion capability pericardial stripping is done for constructive pericarditis patient if there is calcification around the heart the answer is not c guys the answer is not c all we will do in this patient will be bahut bar aisa bhi question aata hai jo ki straight forward hoga in a sense that you will just have to rule out the options why a is not the answer because it is done for cardiac tamponade the lady is not having distended neck veins one of the important diagnostic feature of cardiac tamponade is back stride no in back stride i always say elevated jvp distended neck veins in a patient here there is no evidence present so when you read this question for the first time under 1 minute what's going to be the logic of yours the logic of yours is going to be i'm going to say that again option a the problem is there is no back stride being satisfied plus because she is having it again and again if you going to poke needle into chest of somebody for recurrent episodes i mean the patient will howl when it comes to c pericardial stripping it is for constrictive pericarditis d is for pleural effusion so uh, the answer to this question would be option number bombay that would be a pericardial window which would be a simple procedure by which we will be able to connect the pericardial space with the peritoneal cavity and when you connect the pericardial uh, space and the uh, and the and the uh, uh, i would say the peritoneal cavity that the fluid will be able to move out and therefore the recurrence of the problems of these patients would become relatively lesser so let's move on to the next one we have this smoker who comes to you sir if you are sitting for fmg exam for the first time then you will come to know what what they ask if you are sitting for neat pg you have can go through the previous year papers and you would you would know the kind of questions that they ask so pericardial window would be the correct one okay let's focus at the job at hand for the next question uh, this one talks about 40 year old smoker with cough chest pain and pain in the left shoulder uh, all the features are either suggestive of tuberculosis or it could be even uh, lung cancer hr ct shows a lung mass in the left upper zone so uh, i mean he is definitely talking about some kind of a maybe a tumor present the only thing is that there is also lytic lesions present in the humerus of this patient so possibly the cancer could have metastasized and then he has given a lung biopsy report for this particular patient yes uh, hi kajal dr kajal peaceful noise your answer is right for this one so let's look at what you guys are going to interpret for this one uh, dr dayanand patel has come out with the correct answer for this one yash yes you nailed it right because most of the time when we get a question like this our first thought process would be that this is going to be a lung cancer but the point against lung cancer is that there is lytic lesions in the humerus now most of the time lung cancer can go to any lung cancer can go to uh, any bone per se so yes i'll keep that in my differential diagnosis but then very good uh, dr dayanand patel has been able to pick up these vesicles i mean the electron microscopy of this patient is the giveaway where you always read about tennis racket uh, birbeg granules and uh, i think you have been spot on with respect to the pathology image which will help you in nailing down the diagnosis for this patient i mean it's very clear because pancos tumor agar hota to pancos tumor would have contributed to horner syndrome in a patient there are no features of horner syndrome like ptosis meiosis etc in the question so pancos is off the radar uh, small cell lung cancer with pleuritis but then it is the option c is not explaining the lytic lesions which are present so i will focus on option number a versus d uh, if this pathology image was not given if this pathology image is not given then i would have definitely thought is option number a as an answer but uh, the point is you don't need to there lot of time there would be pathology images which are just going to be dummy images which will tend to distract you so what you need to do is just focus on what you have read that would be that classical birbeck granules thing that birbeck granules you read about those vesicles and those cylindrical stalks which are present which look like actually i mean the way i've drawn it looks like the appearance of a terminal spore of clostridium tetani and this is classically taught as a tennis racket appearance uh why answer is not option c is because pleuritis part can be explained but not the lytic lesion in the humerus of this patient no? okay i'll just zoom into the pic also i mean it's uh, uh, all you can see is infiltrate or a mass of large of uh, i would say large amount of uh, basophilic cells 
small uniform basophilic cells which are infiltrating into the slide so the slide is not making any any conclusion but uh, yes uh, dr sri hari you will clear all of them and uh, yes yes uh, the point is it's it's the bone mass which has to be worked out in this case uh, exam mein zoom uh, feature nahi hoga ha ji nahi hoga definitely the zoom feature may not be present uh tennis racket appearance is what is need to be picked up and i think srujana you right probably a question like this was asked with respect to lung cancer and its metastasis <laughs> okay <laughs> okay fine fine so answer to this question will turn out to be option number d and i think most guys have been spot on for picking this up good job i think good job everybody for especially this question moving to the next one let's check out your reflex for this one not a triad or dressler syndrome which happens to be a post mi complication it's a late complication which is seen post mi the question says which of the following would not be a feature related to it if i say anything more more i mean the answer would become much more uh, i would say obvious so i'm just waiting for you guys to comment here with respect to not a feature with respect to dressler it's it's an autoimmune complication right i mean in your fmg exam they simply ask that dressler will be due to the answer is autoimmunity and because it is autoimmune there would be presence of fever in the patient there is pericarditis also occurring the pericarditis can cause a pleural effusion i have ruled out two options for you guys yes nishta is right uh, uh, dr balti is right ankush is right pleuritis component will also be present that could be reactive pleuritis or a pleural effusion in the patient but uh, elevated tlc and crp are not components per se for this and anyway crp in this condition may or may not be elevated because most of the time this would be having a autoimmune etiology there are three components uh, with respect to dressler syndrome and the triad that you need to remember that is going to be obviously there is going to be autoimmune pericarditis so there could be fever with chest pain and you get that classical uh, st segment elevation डॉक्टर प्लूराइटिस इसलिए हो जाएगा क्योंकि पेरिकार्डाइटिस है ना तो प्लूरा और पेरिकार्डियम जो है दे कुड बी यू नो वेरी एडजस्टेंट टू इच अदर सो दिस इज मेनली रिएक्टिव प्लूराइटिस पेरिकार्डाइटिस तो होता है वो तो ठीक है बट देन प्लूरा एंड पेरिकार्डियम दे आर लाइक यू नो एडजस्टेंट टू इच अदर वेर द हार्ट इज मीटिंग विद लंग्स सो देर देर इज अ हाई प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट इफ यू हैव अ पेरिकार्डाइटिस देन पेरिकार्डाइटिस कैन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू अ रिएक्टिव पेरी प्लूराइटिस कॉम्पोनेट एज वेल इन द ट्रायड answer to this question is option number delta i mean it's more of a fact based question but still the logic is simply i mean if you are asking me ki sir pericarditis we have read why a pleuritis then i said reactive changes and uh, anatomical proximity which can explain this the answer to this question would be option number d uh, i'm still getting uh, your fever to ho jayega na autoimmune reaction hai to us wajah se yes arsh you are perfectly right for this question so your you see your reflexes are getting better you know as you progress in the discussion you you tend to get better better and that's what happens with all of us when we do questions initially the questions might go wrong like i think most people messed up on this particular question that i'm bringing into focus once again where i asked uh, with respect to this recurrent pericardial effusion because traditionally we read about recurrent pleural effusion so i mean you know that error of judgment came and people started answering d but then subsequently you guys have picked up well and that's the spirit that is actually required in the exam you know two questions go wrong and then uh, you know the suddenly then the remaining four five you will be able to do very properly sir ji questions karo jitna zyada kar doge uh, aspirin is used for treatment varsha for the treatment of uh, pericarditis right so in the last few days you have to do questions as much as possible you need to get uh, treatment for uh, dressler is, is what you are asking uh, shubham uh, will give aspirin no aspirin is the treatment yep 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 it's the treatment no aspirin is the treatment for it it treats the inflammatory reaction which is present here yep uh see the point is lymphocytosis anything else buddy the point is uh, what i'm trying to explain is that uh, 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 not a compound of the triad i mean tlc may or may not be elevated you can't predict that very good hi dr anand raban tiwari the next one is easy flash pulmonary edema in renal artery stenosis it's a standard diagnosis to hota kya hai isme that there would be increase in renin 
so the bp keeps on increasing 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 because the bp will increase very fast in this patient therefore they could be left ventricular failure because traditionally when bp rises slowly when bp rises slowly you have is a left ventricular hypertrophy but uh, in this particular situation because there's going to be a you know a very tremendous and a fast increase in the blood pressure values so you would be having is a development of left ventricular failure in fact this is the classical terminology that you need to remember that is the word flash pulmonary edema is seen with hypertension because traditionally hypertension contributes to hypertrophy uh, i also got d as an answer for this one critical mitral stenosis well it will cause pulmonary edema understandable but the term flash pulmonary edema has been discussed only once in the videos or even in your college also you would have read about flash pulmonary edema being uh, discussed only for renal artery stenosis the answer is not d guys the answer is option number c i mean critical mitral stenosis will cause a pulmonary edema that's understandable and double and triple vessel disease there anyway presentations for chronic stable angina so they can easily be ruled out and they're not related to i mean even immediate development of uh, flash pulmonary edema in a patient the answer to this one is c yep so we move on to the next one this talks about uh, this uh, 35 year old man he is having jaundice with aversion to smoking for past one week so liver is definitely involved in fact the liver is 3 cm below the costal margin the lft of this patient shows presence of hyperbilirubinemia you can see the direct values are going up to 2.5 and then the liver enzymes are in thousands i mean huge 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 increase in the values of ast and alt alp is 130 it's still in three digits i would say so i would say that uh, all the features point toward development of hepatocellular jaundice in the patient and uh, why i'm not talking about obstructive jaundice is because obstructive jaundice then should be having predominantly uh, a value of alp rise and liver may not be palpable so considering the fact that uh, there is a hepatomegaly and uh, the lft of the patient shows gross derangement of these two enzymes so i would be first thinking in favor of uh, hepatocellular jaundice i am still waiting for your answers for this one uh, yep it's atherosclerosis the flash word is the key for solving that mcq yep for the previous one okay fine fine i think it's pretty straight forward the person is having hepatocellular jaundice he says which of the following test would be done in the patient next so i got c as an answer reassurance uh, yep it means there is a viral hepatitis in the patient no so i mean reassurance is something that you don't do you first do a workup of the patient uh, d says okay people coming out with d uh, it says albumin globulin ratio to check for acute and chronic liver disease so yeah i will do that i will do that but the question says what are you going to do immediately in this patient so what i'm going to do is check out the viral serology i'll check out for which virus is responsible so what we are going to check out in this guy is that is it hepatitis a or is it going to be hepatitis b and either uh, it's going to be hepatitis c and uh, if none of these are present then it could be possibly a hepatitis e in the patient so anti hcv antibody this is the antibody profile that they always love to ask you with respect to hepatitis b uh, the question is pretty a straightforward one uh, you would be doing antibody profile for this patient after that you will do a ultrasound and you will do a albumin also so karna to sab kuch hai but the main point is with the enzymes getting deranged to the level that i mentioned this looks like a case of viral hepatitis because of which uh, the answer would be b reassurance and counseling is only valid agar wo hepatitis b nikalta hai to aap usko bataoge ki bhai don't worry hepatitis b 90% cases recovery would be present for people saying option number a which is still coming up in the chat box ultrasound abdomen yes i mean you need to do ultrasound for this particular case but first aap demonstrate to karo na sir first you need to demonstrate that there is a hepatitis component present and then subsequently you will be doing a ultrasound so if you go through the uh, i mean the logical aspects here yes yes dr imran perfectly right emphysemite is lesser uh, in chronic bronchitis sir it could be normal yes definitely definitely uh, dr mohammad imran yes i had rectified that actually the answer for this question would be option number b thanks uh, dr imran for the kind inputs 
okay, uh, AST, A, uh, okay, ALT, AST ratio should be at least more than two. That's not a necessity, sir. That's not a necessity. I mean, every time you are having a liver damage, this guy, he, maybe he could be alcoholic also, so his AST was already elevated. So I think this is what relatively uh, easy one, right? I can give you easy ones also in between, apart from the error ones uh, with uh, error. Okay, moving to the 62nd one, uh, moving to the next one. Sir, all units have to be done are equally important as you will see it would be mixed bag responses that would be present. Uh, moving to, yes, the any asked about the chronic profile, yes. Okay, moving to the next one, we have the 62 year old man, he presents to the ER with the very severe leg pain and uh, the vitals of this patient show blood pressure of 150, irregular pulse of 92. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean AST, ALT in Wilson also, but then jaundice would not be so prominent, no, most of the time. Uh, the kind of an history is only a one week, so I would not think in terms of Wilson in this patient at all. Otherwise, we have this table, which is the standard one. I mean, you need to go for a viral study, viral serology initially. Apart from this, you need to go in for copper and iron studies. Moving to the next one, we have this uh, gentleman who is 62 years of age. He is having leg pain. And uh, physical examination shows absent pulses. So, what I am having in the patient is development of ALI, that is acute limb ischemia. The keyword for this question would be that there is acute limb ischemia. Why? Because there is an irregular pulse in the patient. And when it comes to irregular pulse in the patient, then there would be a definite problem in the form of a atrial fibrillation. So the bottom line is that uh, if you are going to be having a acute limb ischemia in the patient, there, there is a clot. So uh, yes, the answer is pretty straightforward for this one also. Uh, option number A, amputation would be done only if there is a evidence of gangrene. The question does not give any information for gangrene. Fasciotomy would be done if there is a compartment syndrome. This question is not talking about compartment syndrome. And uh, when it comes to warfarin, then warfarin is obviously an anticoagulant that we use. But warfarin is what we might be using in deep vein thrombosis. In this particular chap, I need to straight away go in for a thromboembolectomy and uh, I'll be able to handle this case more effectively. I mean, uh, the clot has to be removed. Uh, the key word was this irregular pulse, which once you are able to pick up tells you that this would be a atrial fibrillation and it's uh, a cardioembolic problem. I mean, the clots luckily did not go towards the brain, but the clots did not go towards the brain, but the clots ended up in, uh, 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 the, uh, in the femoral artery of this patient and in downstream, therefore, there is an occlusion of the popliteal artery and the posterior tibial uh, circulation. Uh, a, sir, I uh, amputation is to be done only if there is a gangrene occurring in the patient. There is no evidence of any gangrene per se. <sighs> yep. Critical limb ischemia, ankle brachial index would be less than 0.3. That is where probable gangrene would be developing in the patient. Okay. Let us move on to the next one. C, sir, fasciotomy. Uh, Dr. Ariza would be done for compartment syndrome. Warfarin anyway takes time to act. Let us move on to the next one. We have this. Uh, hi, Dr. Akhil Srikanth, you are right in your answer. Shafia, you are right in your answer. Uh, we come to the next question for today. This is a 35 year old lady having lymphedema of the right arm post mastectomy. So she would have undergone this modified uh, radical mastectomy. There would be axillary lymph node dissection also. So considering the fact that axillary lymph nodes have been removed in this patient, there is a lymphedema present in the patient. Uh, she is having lymph hyperkeratosis. There is thickness of the arm which is increased and she is not able to uh, do her daily activities. Uh, sir, IVC filter is useful for uh, recurrent uh, deep vein thrombosis. Uh, the query that came up for IVC filter, that IVC filter is valid for recurrent deep vein thrombosis. In this patient, uh, IVC filter is not going to work, no. I mean, a person having recurrent pulmonary embolism, to be precise. If a person is having recurrent pulmonary embolism, yes, after embolectomy, he will require warfarin. But IVC filter is mainly for recurrent pulmonary embolism due to deep vein thrombosis. 
Okay, let's focus on this particular question of lymphedema in the arm of the patient. And the question says which of the following surgical procedure would be done for managing this case. Uh, I got C, I got A. Uh, let's look at A. A would not be a surgical procedure. I mean tight compression bandage, restrict activity in the left arm. Where is the problem present in the patient? The MCQ began by telling us problem is in the right arm of the patient. So, and she is not able to work with the right hand. So, why answer is not A is because that is not a surgical procedure and it is also written left arm whereas the problem is in the right arm of the patient. Right. C is lymphocentigraphy. That is only in the workup of the patient. No? Even if I remove the word surgical procedure, I said even if I remove this word surgical procedure, even if I say which procedure would be advised for this patient, then for treatment of lymphedema which is causing debility, we need to go in for a vascularized lymph node transfer. The answer for this question is option number beta. Fasciotomy as we have discussed is already uh, discussed for and it's done for compartment syndrome.